Hi everyone, and thanks for watching Science at Home. I'm Laura Greenwell, an administrative assistant at 3M. Every day, I get to work with some great people, like scientists and inventors, people who have made things that you work with at home in your art projects and your STEM projects, like scotch tape and post-it notes. Did you know that you can make wine glasses sing? Perhaps you've seen this before or even tried this before, but have you ever wondered why they make sound? Glasses have been used for music making since the Middle Ages. This is based on the principle of making musical tones by friction. But what does that mean? When you rub your finger along the rim of a wine glass, you encounter friction or resistance. But if you have your finger wet, it reduces the friction, making it a little bit more slippery. When the pressure and the amount of moisture are just right, this stick-slip motion will cause vibrations in the sides of the glass, creating a sound wave with a specific frequency. The frequency specifies the rate at which a vibration occurs. There's a particular frequency called the resonant frequency at which the sides of the wine glasses vibrate most easily. And the resonant frequency for wine glasses is typically within the range of human hearing. As a result, you will hear the resonant vibration as a tone. In today's activity, you will not only make wine glasses sing, but you will generate different notes. Our first step is always safety. You'll often see scientists wearing safety glasses or safety goggles and gloves, especially when they're dealing with volatile chemicals or extreme temperatures. Since we're working with generally safe materials, I don't think I'll need my gloves today, but I always have my safety glasses on hand. And make sure you have an adult nearby to help you out. In today's activity, you will not only make wine glasses sing, but you will also learn how to generate different notes. We will use different quantities of water in order to change the pitch of the notes lower or higher. To get started, we'll need wine glasses and the permission to use them. For today, you can use one or up to three wine glasses. Water in a liquid measuring cup, a metal spoon, and I'm going to use my piano to help us out today. First, find a working area and carefully gather your wine glasses, measuring cup, water, and spoon. And you can have your adult help you out with this part. Wash your hands with dish soap and rinse your hands thoroughly. And make sure they're dry for the first part. Now let's start our experiment. Go ahead and take one wine glass in the center of your area and hold the base down with your non-dominant hand. This is the hand that you do not write with. With your dominant hand, the hand you do write with, take your first finger, index finger, and go ahead and rub that dry finger around the rim of the wine glass, pressing down gently, and observe how it feels. Does it make any sound? Does it stick to the rim or does it glide smoothly? All right, now let's go ahead and wet that index finger in the water and try it again. Does it feel different than with your dry finger? How much resistance do you feel this time? Does the glass start to sing? Here's a tip. If you hear no sound, Try changing the speed and applying more or less pressure. Now, while you're hearing the glass sing, lift your finger off the rim and take it away from the glass gently. Let's try that. Does the glass continue to sing or does it stop? Now make the glass sing again and stop rubbing your finger along the rim, but this time leave your finger on the glass. And what happens to the sound this time? Let's take a metal spoon and very gently tap the side of the glass. Does this generate a different sound to the note compared to when you used your finger to make the glass sing? You can also compare the note with a note sounded on a piano or keyboard. So I think I'm hearing something pretty high. 
maybe like a B above middle C, or even higher. Let's hear that. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and continue. We're going to fill up the same glass or a new one with about a third of water, give or take. All right, we're going to take the same procedure again with our moistened finger. What note does the glass make now? Is the pitch higher or lower? Let's go ahead and watch the surface of the water in the glass as we make the glass sing. Do you see any movement? Or is the water calm? Let's take that middle spoon and tap it again on the side very gently. Do you get the same note or a different note with the middle spoon? And let's go ahead and compare that note to a note on the piano. Hmm. I think that's a B flat. Let's hear that. I've got to wet my finger again. I need more moisture to reduce the resistance. Yeah, B flat compared to B. Okay, this is getting interesting. Let's go ahead and try it and add a little bit more water to the same glass or new one. We're gonna do a lot this time. Two thirds or even more than that is fine. So rub your damp finger on the rim of the wine glass. And how does it feel this time? Did the sound become higher or lower? Ooh, the vibrations in the surface water. Check out those. Take the metal spoon for the last time and gently tap the glass on the side. What note do you generate? And let's go ahead and compare these three notes. We have this one. And here we have this one with less water in the glass and this one with no water. Let's find this note on the piano. Approximately. E, B flat, B. So let's recap. By rubbing your finger along the rim of the glass, you made the walls of the glass vibrate, and you may have felt vibrations in your finger too. When you take your finger away from the glass, the walls continue to vibrate, producing a musical note. But when you stop rubbing your finger and leave it on the rim of the glass, the vibrations and sound stop. In the glass filled with water, you should have seen the generated vibrations in the form of a little wave pattern. In each case, when you tap the glass with a metal spoon, you should have heard the same note as when you used with your finger. The metal spoon is another way to create vibrations. When you added different amounts of water to the glass, you notice the pitch change depending on the water amount. The more water you add, the lower the pitch. This means the sound wave made by the vibrations is much slower or has a lower frequency. Frequency of a note is correlated to its pitch. So the pitch produced by the glass goes down as you add more water. If you can use more than one glass, you can play around with different levels of water, different glass shapes and sizes. Each one will have a different resonance frequency and produce a different note. Remember to clean up when you're done, pour the water down the sink, and wash your materials thoroughly. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Laura Greenwell, and I hope you check out more Science at Home videos from 3M.